DreAllDay.com. In this video, I want to talk about health and taking care of your body. Some of you who are athletes, maybe you feel like you're already taking care of your body, and some of you out there, you are. But some people who, even when you're athletes, even when you play a sport, and you're out there working out and going to the gym and you know doing the things that you do every day, posting you no know, pictures of yourself on your social media, and people love it. You still there are still maybe some things that you can do to take better care of your body. And specifically, what I want to talk in this video is what you're putting in your body. So not necessarily. I mean, we could talk about you know your, your practice habits and what you do in the gym and lifting weights and conditioning and. A lot of other things, stretching, foam rolling, recovery, ice baths, all that. But I want to talk about what you're putting in your body. And I thought of this uh, subject simply because just recently I was on a, a trip with a few friends of mine, people who are former athletes and they're not, none of them is really in shape <laughs> anymore. They used to be in shape, but they're not in shape anymore. And it was a Sunday morning and I saw them and I'm like, yo, did everybody eat yet? Or did anybody eat? Yeah, because people wanted to get breakfast before we all, because we had to travel. And they were like, no, but well, we about to go to Denny's. And Denny's, y'all know Denny's, right? Now, I'm not a Denny's eater. I, I would not eat a meal at Denny's on my own volition under any circumstances. And I'll get to that in a minute why. But anyway, it was like three of them and one of me. I, went, I didn't want to argue or cause anything. And I, I, I really thought people was just being cheap. It wasn't even about... It ain't like somebody was like, yo, I just love Denny's, we gotta eat there. No, was, motherfuckers didn't want to spend no money. So they wanted to go to the cheapest place they knew, which was Denny's, and it was close by, we could walk there. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So we go to Denny's, I try to order like the, the best looking thing they had on the menu, and it was still fucking terrible. It was like a, a veggie skillet, and the shit was fucking garbage. Because it's Denny's, I mean, what do you expect when you eat at Denny's? I already knew what it was gonna be, but I didn't say nothing. I'm looking around the table, the other three guys that I'm with, they're eating their food like it's like the best thing they ever had in their lives. Like it's fucking, you know, <laughs> I don't know, name a good restaurant. They was eating there like it was like fucking uh, Gordon Ramsay made it or some celebrity chef. You know? But anyway, I, as we're sitting there talking about this stuff, I asked them like, yo, why are we eating a meal at Denny's? And this what's crazy is these dudes, not me, but them, they ate at Denny's the day before. So they ate Denny's two days in a row. I'm like, why are we eating at Denny's? And somebody was honest and they said, why are we eating at Denny's? They said, because it's cheap. And I said, yo, this shit is cheap for a reason. <laughs> and I said it like a joke and it was a whole lot more that I could have said, but I wasn't going like preach to these dudes about why they didn't need to eat it. I, instead, I'll preach to you here on this video because honestly, you don't want to go talking about that stuff to people who ain't really trying to hear it. Because if they really cared about that stuff, then we wouldn't have been Denny's in the first fucking place. But the points that I want to make in this video is, it, first of all, on that note right there, let's just start there. And that was really the thing that got me thinking about this is people don't want to invest in what they put in their bodies because they're counting their money. You know, somebody doesn't want to go. I remember I went to Whole Foods with a friend of mine who's a former athlete, former athlete, went to Whole Foods with him. And he was and I was like, yo, do you shop at Whole Foods where you live? And he was, because we live in different places. And he was like, yo, I ain't never been in Whole Foods in my life. And this dude used to be in good shape, but he's not in good shape anymore. And I, that was just mind blowing to me. Like, I couldn't understand that. And well, actually I did completely understand him. I couldn't understand why this person never wanted to invest in their bodies. And you are already an athlete. So that's why I'm saying, even if you're an athlete and you're in good shape or you got nice, you got you got a nice six pack and muscles and girls look at you and all that when you got your shirt off, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're taking care of your body as best that you can. Because we all understand, and if maybe you haven't experienced this yet, but you will understand, and once you get above age, I'll say about maybe 26, 27, that's when your body stops just working perfectly just because. Like up to that point for me, physically, I would go to the gym, work out, work on my game all day, not drink any water, no foam roller, I didn't even know what a foam roller was, no stretching, no recovery, no ice anywhere on my body, no stretching before I played, I just walk in the gym, start playing. I would do all that stuff and be fine. The very next day, I mean, eat, drink soda that night, eat pizza, drink alcohol when I was in college, stay up late, not get enough sleep, and it didn't matter. I go right back to the court the next day and perform at the exact same level that I was the day before. That was until I got to about in my mid-20s, mid to late 20s, 
And that's when the body stopped responding so well. That's when I realized, all right, I better start taking care of my body. I better start stretching and doing the foam rolling and the recovery and putting ice on my knees. And I knew I needed to start doing that stuff. And it's not like I didn't know about it. I had seen it by that point. I had seen other people doing it, but I didn't care about it because it didn't seem to be affecting me. So those of you who are not yet that age, when you get to that point, that's when your body's not gonna just keep working for you despite the fact that you're not helping. You're not meeting it halfway. You're gonna have to start meeting your body at least halfway. Then you need to start going full way. But anyway, back to the point that I'm making about money. People say, you know, the joke used to be people don't like to shop at Whole Foods because you wanna spend your whole paycheck. It was like Whole Foods, whole paycheck. And I think Whole Foods heard about that. So they started to lower some prices on some things and obviously Amazon acquired them. So Amazon, you got the Amazon mix and you can get better stuff for a lower price. But still to this day, I think if you were to go and get a, a week's worth of groceries from Whole Foods and get it from your local grocer, whoever that may be, Whole Foods probably still wanna come out more. Or if you wanna eat organic, like me personally, I only eat organic produce, most of the produce that I eat. Anything that doesn't have like a cover, like an orange or a banana, even bananas. I only eat organic. And organic costs more money. You gotta spend more money to get organic produce than it costs to get any other kind of produce. And when I first started doing it, I was like, damn, this shit costs way more. It's like twice the price. Is it even worth it? But now I've I've done it so often and for so long and I've realized the difference. I can taste the difference between the two that it's not a big deal to me anymore. But the thing about the money is, here's the, the crux of the point. Every dollar that you decide to save and not spend. And actually, I heard a woman say this on a TED talk, like, man, this had to be like six years ago. So don't ask me who the talk was, cause it's, I mean, there's a thousand, a million TED talks out there now. So I don't even know how I would find this if I needed it. But anyway, it was this woman who told the story. I don't even remember what the, the point of her talk was, but she got diagnosed with this disease where the doctors are basically like, yo, this is a terminal disease you're not gonna live. You only got a year to live or six months to live or something like that. And a woman decided, and obviously she's giving the test, so she decided that, no, I'm not gonna just accept that diagnosis. I'm gonna figure this out. The doctor said, there's nothing we can do. There's no medicine for this. There's nothing we can do. You basically got this much time and it's a wrap. So the woman went online and she started researching and trying to figure out, you know, what are the things that I can do to, to best take care of myself? If the doctors can't do nothing, what can I do for me? It's my life. So she decided that if she went on a, her theory was that if she went on just this plant-based diet and just ate plants and all these greens and vegetables and ate healthy and did all these healthy, healthy things, quote unquote, and these things are healthy, but she did all these healthy things that maybe she could survive. And the long story short is she did survive. She went on this plant-based diet and was eating all these greens and vegetables and stuff every day, all day, drinking water, taking care of herself. All the things that all of us know we need to do for ourselves, but we don't fucking do it. She started doing this stuff and she beat the disease and she was still alive, obviously, because she was giving a TED talk on, on, the, on the situation. And one of the things that she said in that video, and this is around the time when I was like, I knew about eating more organic stuff and shopping at Whole Foods and investing more money in the stuff I put in my body simply because it was worth the investment because I was an athlete and not even being an athlete, but just being a human being. Because listen, if your body starts to break down, I don't care if you play sports or not, it doesn't feel good and it's not a good situation to be in. This is the thing that she said. She said for every amount, every dollar that you decide not to spend and invest in your body because you want to be cheap. So instead of buying organic apples for eight dollars, you buy the conventional apples for three dollars. Every dollar that you save being cheap on your body now when you're able bodied and healthy, you're gonna spend that same dollar. And I would say you're probably gonna spend five times the dollars. For every one dollar, you're gonna spend five dollars on hospital bills, medical visits, uh, surgeries, insurance co-pays, paying out of pocket if you don't have insurance, all the pills that you're gonna to have to pay for, all the medicines that you're gonna to have to take, you're gonna spend five times the money later on down the line when your body starts to break down. When you get to, I mean, listen, how old are people when they have heart attacks or when they get some kind of something that you're like, yo, this person, ain't this person a little bit too young for that to be happening to them? How young have we seen it happen to people? people it happens to people in their 40s, their 50s, their 60s, and otherwise you might've thought they were healthy and they probably thought they were healthy because those things just add up over time. And for me, everybody knows that, you know, the main thing that I'm, I've always been about, of course, work on your game, but the main thing of work on your game is discipline. 
Discipline is the first and the first point, the most important one. If I had to just pick one, is the discipline. Your ability to just show up and do the right things consistently, even when you don't feel like doing the right things, even when it'll be much more easy and convenient to do something other than the right thing, doing the right thing anyway. And when it comes to taking care of our bodies, again, I don't need to make a video, I've done these videos already, but I don't need to make a video about here's the things that you should eat and should not eat. And listen, there are plenty of people out there who do it more than me and probably could explain it better than me. But honestly, you don't even need that video. I mean, do you need a video for somebody to tell you not to eat, that potato chips are not good for your body? You need somebody to tell you that? Somebody to tell you that fried chicken wings are probably not the best fuel you could put in your body? Do you need somebody to tell you that drinking water is good for you and alcohol is not? Do you need someone to tell you that organic, maybe organic versus conventional, if you never experienced it, maybe you wouldn't know the difference, but I'll tell you. When I started eating organic, let's say apples, we'll just use apples as an example, because everybody's had those. When I started eating organic apples and then I got a conventional apple, you can taste the difference. A conventional apple tastes like fucking plastic. Like I won't eat a conventional apple <laughs> unless it's like the only thing there and I'm like super duper hungry and there's nothing else, I'll eat it. But other than that, I don't fuck with conventional produce no more. And I'm not saying it's like I'm uh, too bougie to eat shit like that, but once you experience it, again, if you haven't experienced it, then you wouldn't understand. Once you experience it and you eat organic for like a week, and then you go back to eating conventional, you'll taste the difference. Like, yo, this shit tastes like fucking, it tastes like plastic. You can taste that it, you can taste the lack of quality in that food. And again, I want you to find that out for yourself. But the point that I'm making here is you can't be penny wise and dollar foolish. For those of you who don't know what that means, it means when you're thinking so much about how much can I save or gain or what do I get right now in this moment, but you're not thinking about how much more you stand to gain or lose or what it's gonna cost you in the future, this bad decision that you make right now. That, that's penny wise and pound forward. So you can be really smart about saving your money today, but you're not thinking about the fact that by saving money, by buying cheap shit and eating at Denny's today, it's gonna cost you 10 times the money that you're gonna to have to take care of yourself going to that doctor once three times a week in the future when you turn 50 years old or when you turn 45 or no who knows next month if you're not taking care of your body enough and i'll give you an example for this penny wise and pound forward so i was put i put out a a uh like a job listing i was looking for somebody to do some transcription work for me right because i have a podcast and it comes out every day it's over a thousand episodes so i want somebody to start transcribing through my podcast a thousand of them and they all like 20 to 30 minutes long so that's a lot of work Basically, if you get hired as my transcriber, you're gonna always have work. Or you're never gonna run out of work. So I put this application out or job listing out, and I said, look, anybody who's interested in this job, I'm gonna have you perform a test transcription before I hire you, which makes sense, right? It's just you doing this little test to show me that you can actually do the job that I'm hiring you for. And it was like a 12 minute audio clip from my podcast. So it wasn't a normal full length, it was like 12 minutes, I want you to transcribe this so I can get a feel for your ability, what you can do, and just see how you work and see if you would be what I'm looking for, because I need to see that. Basically like a, a basketball tryout, same thing. So this dude comes to me, one of the people who want to apply, and he said, well, look, I'm interested in the job, sir, but you know, you're asking me to perform this 12 minute transcription for free. And this is what he said, you want me to do it for free? And he had question marks like, like it was ridiculous for me to even ask this. Now mind you, I had like 50 applications and everybody who applied did the transcription. Now he didn't know that, but I think he had a pretty good idea that a lot of people were applying, he was applying. So anyway, I say to him, yeah, you need to do the test transcription because that's the way that I judge whether you're, I can gauge whether you're good for the job or not. And he says, well, you know, I'm interested in the job and all that and it sounds like a good deal, good offer what you're making for the job, but you know, you're asking me to do this transcription for free. It's like you're asking for free work. And I'm thinking to myself, and I didn't keep going back and forth with this dude. I just let him know, look, if you don't want to do it, just don't do it because look, I got 50 other people applying for the job. So I don't need you. <laughs> you need this job more than I need you. And that's basically what I let him know and dismissed him and moved on. But he was being, this is what we call being penny wise and pound force. Cause this guy was like, this is a 12 minute transcription. So he wanted like, ten dollars to do the job so i'm like you stupid motherfucker you are standing you're trying to put your foot down over ten dollars today 
in order to lose an opportunity to make thousands of dollars in the future working for me. Because like I just told you, I got all these episodes, all this audio, all these videos, and I'm gonna have someone transcribe, and of course I'm gonna pay you to do it. All this work that you're gonna have in the future, all you gotta do is 12 minutes of test work to prove that you can do the job. But he's like, no, you gotta pay me for the test before I get onto the job. Like, no, that's penny wise and pound foolish. Are y'all understand what I'm saying? That mindset is the same mindset that causes a person to say, you know, I, I'm not gonna read the book, I'm gonna just read the cliff notes. Or somebody can do a review of the book on YouTube, so then I'll have everything I need, so I'm not gonna read the book myself. This is the same person who says, I'm gonna go eat at Denny's instead of going to Whole Foods because Denny's is cheaper. But 10, 20 years from now, that same person is gonna be spending what they would've spent at Whole Foods, they're gonna be spending three times that going to the doctor. Three times that on medication. Three times that on insurance or three, 10 times that out of pocket because their body has started to break down over time because they were undisciplined in what they were putting in their body, just being undisciplined about their thinking. So hopefully what I've said in this video makes sense. Usually when I do these videos, I don't really, I don't take notes or nothing like that. I just go off the top. So hopefully this all made sense. I know I went in a couple different directions, but if you were listening, it should make sense because it makes sense to me. The point is, bottom line point, Take care of your body. Uh, be smart about what you're putting in your body. Actually, I got more than I want to say. I was at a, where was I? Like lunch or dinner with this woman, maybe like seven years ago. And we were talking about this exact thing. We were talking about like, whole, this around the time where I'm transitioning between, it was when I first made all these diet and nutrition videos, those of y'all who were watching back then. This was like 2013, 2012 maybe, if you remember. And I was like thinking about, all right, do I need to start buying organic produce? Should I start shopping at Whole Foods instead of shopping at, down here is a uh, grocery store called Publix. So I start shopping at Publix for my produce and get it from Whole Foods instead? It's gonna cost me more money. Is it worth it? Should I even do this? So I'm talking to this woman, and at this time I had met all these different, and they all happened to be female, all these different women who were like vegan, clean eating, they were into this stuff. And they all came into my life at the same time. So it was like a, a sign from the heavens for me. At least that's the way I interpreted it. And this woman was saying to me, because I was talking about, you know, I don't know if I want to spend all that money on Whole Foods. It costs so much more. I got to, you know, is, I got to drive to the store. Is it even worth it? And the woman looked at me and she was like, Dre, it's your body. You're an athlete on top of that, right? Like, how are you not going to invest in your body of all people? Like, you play sports for a living. If your body goes, you lose your whole business. Your whole, your whole shit goes out of service if something goes wrong with your body. That's your whole job. And it was like a, it was like a reality check. It was like a wake up call for me. So those of you who are athletes, just because your body looks good doesn't mean you're in good shape. All right? Just because you know you got the abs and you got the muscles and you can dunk or whatever it is that you're doing as an athlete that got you feeling yourself, make sure you're putting the right stuff in your body because a body breaks down from the inside out. What that means is shit starts going wrong in places that we can't see before they start going wrong in places that we can see. So just because it looks good on the outside doesn't mean everything on the inside is working properly. And that's a, actually a great metaphor for life in general. So all y'all out there being cheap about your food, about your groceries, about where you eat dinner, about how much you're gonna spend on lunch and all that. Listen, if you can invest money into a fucking phone and you can invest money into some sneakers and you can invest money into some you no know, fucking fashion over gear and you can invest money into going to a concert and you can invest in going on vacations and you can invest money in a whole bunch of shit that you're gonna eventually replace by investing more money in something else to take a spot like this phone you watching this video on eventually you're gonna buy a new phone every month you pay that phone company think about all the stuff you spend money on that has no real bearing on the quality of your life that you spend extra that you didn't have to spend. Like you get a smartphone for cheaper than the one you got. You get clothes for cheaper than what you got on. I'm not telling you that you need to be cheap with your clothes or your phone or anything. What I'm telling you is, if you see the value in that and you're willing to invest in that, then be disciplined enough, be wise enough to invest in your body. Because if something goes wrong with your body and you're in the doctor because you're in such pain that you can't function, listen, it don't matter what kind of phone you got. It doesn't matter you know, how many likes you got on that outfit that you bought at the mall last week. It doesn't matter you know, what kind of sneakers you got on. It doesn't matter how much fun you had at the club the previous night or how great the show was or your favorite rapper did a concert and you paid $300 for the tickets. 
None of that matters when your body starts failing. So if you invest in all those things, be smart enough, be wise enough to invest in yourself. Because when you go, everything else goes with it. Work on your game. Dre all day.